Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and I have this purple knife for you today by Y-Start. VG10 stainless steel. And yes, I do believe it is very likely actual VG10 stainless steel. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Small backspacer. So it's easy to clean, just like an open pillar construction knife is. Really cool uh, titanium texture that you have on here. You can get it in just a regular gray color as well, but this purple color is quite fine. And it's got a custom milled, well not custom, but it's got a pocket clip that is milled just for this knife, which is very, very nice. Not too heavy. Sort of a tanto. The tanto's got a bit of a belly. The transition spot there is a tiny bit of a transition, even though I've sharpened this thing a couple times now. I still have a tiny transition point. There's still very, very nice knife. It does not come cheap. Uh, the titanium handle scale, they took a lot of work to make these as nice as they did. I think it's worth the amount that they're charging for it. If it's not worth that much to you, hey, that's no problem. Don't buy it. Uh, that's just the way knives are, right? You can get all different kinds of prices. It's not just about the blade steel. It's about the package. And if you want to learn more about this package, stick around. Hopefully the vacuuming that my wife is doing upstairs won't filter into the video too much. So what do we have here? We've got a drop point with a swedge on it. Nice thick piece of steel here. Uh, big uh, tanto kind of tip here. And look at the way that tanto is ground once it focuses. I like that the way the tanto is ground back. Flat grind here, high saber grind here, bit of a belly on the front of the tanto. And then there's a tiny bit of a belly on this edge as well. It's not totally straight. It's a little bit of a belly here. Sharpener's soil, stone wash on the flats, a little bit of jimping right here on the thumb riser. Quite nice. And then the milling and the texture on the handle. I got a little bit of dirt in those cracks. I can clean that out of that uh, three-way screw. You can use a small flat driver to easily use that. Or you can go and buy those three-way drivers. Uh, most places that give you hardware uh, tools and stuff have those kind. Um, even Harbor Freight or in Canada, Princess Auto, you can get those. And very easy to adjust the pivot on there with those. But check out the milling in here. Really, really nice. I like it an awful lot. It has a feeling that you don't often find with titanium. It's, it's hard to describe. It's kind of this, I don't call it smooth in the sense of that it's going to slip in your hand, but it, if metal could feel soft, that's what this feels like. I know it's really hard to explain. Uh, and, You've got a lanyard hole right here. Thankfully, they've indented it just slightly so that if you do tie a lanyard on there, it doesn't bulk out quite as far. And it's like a tube hole because you've got the backspacer. And that's just a small backspacer there, as you can see. The backspacer's got a little bit of built-in jipping. Not large at all. And then if you look on the inside, there's no uh, milling out of the inside. They could have made this thing lose a little bit of weight if they would have milled it out just a little bit. And, you know, nice and smooth, so it's easy to clean that up. Pocket clip only goes in this one spot, and it's it also has a nice texture to it. And functionality, you know, the pocket clip has got a really good amount of retention. Nice clip. You've got a lock bar insert steel so that uh, it works as an over travel stop. So you can only push it so far because it drops down between 
the lock bar and the titanium. I think you can see it right there. If you look between the two screws and then up, there it is right there. You can see it hopefully on your screen. First finger toil, second finger toil, and then your last two fingers. My hand fits this knife very, very well. I've got hands that are right on the borderline between large and extra large. That's between 10 and 11 in European sizes. Very, very comfortable. I do wish that they would have chamfered the edges on the belly of the knife just ever so slightly more than they did. They're rounded over a little bit, but I wish they were just chamfered a tiny, tiny bit. That's being super nitpicky. It's quite comfortable in hand for long-term use. And this is one of the first knives that I did cutting tests on. And did I do cutting tests on this one or what? I did lots of cutting tests. I tried, I tried this manila rope. I tried this sizal rope and I did a lot of work with that. And I just couldn't get good results. Now I could get, you know, consistent results, but I'd have to do like, you know, five, 600 cuts, you know, before it would start getting dull. And that's because with my arthritis, I can't really do the sawing motion that much. I would only press straight through. And that's hard to make your blade dull if you just press straight through that kind of rope. But I finally found something I'm using. Wait, wait for it. <laughs> Guess what I'm using? If anybody can guess before you hear it, uh, put it in the comment section below. Make your guess right now, and I'll tell you uh, in a few minutes what I'm actually using for my cut test. I do believe that the blade is VG10 because I compared the cut tests between a Kaiser knife with VG10 and this Y-Start knife with VG10, and I got very, very similar results on both of them. Uh, nice thick blade here. Let's do the sizes, and then I'll tell you what I use for the cutting test. Cutting edge, 9.6 centimeters, 3.77 inches. Blade length, because this tip comes forward, it's just a tiny bit longer, 9.75 centimeters, 3.84 inches. Blade thickness back here, 4 millimeters. That's 0.156 inches. So we've got a thick blade stock to start with, but we've got a fairly high grind. So Uh, blade depth, 2.6 centimeters, one inch back here. Thickness of the edge behind the grind. Ooh, I forgot to do the translation. 0.64 millimeters, and I'll tell you what that is in inches. So I prefer to get around 0.5 millimeters, like half a millimeter instead of 0.6, but I got 0.64 millimeters. Uh, and that's when I measured it now after I was all done. And I have had to sharpen this thing a number of times. So from the factory, it was thinner behind the grind than that. I've sharpened this thing, I think, five times. That's how many times I did that cut test. Uh, I wanted to see if I could get consistent results, and I should have, you know, switched it between more different knives. Handle. Handle length, 12.75 centimeters, 5 inches. Grip area, 10.2 centimeters, 4 inches. Handle thickness not counting the pocket clip, is 1.28 centimeters, half of an inch on the nose. Handle depth, and this is the deepest spot right here, well, other than the tip here. And that's the measurement from the spine to the belly, right here on this ridge between your two fingers. 2.6 centimeters, one inch. The total length of this knife when the blade is deployed is 22.43 centimeters, 8.83 inches. So this is a very close to a nine inch knife. And how much does this almost nine inch knife weigh? 154 grams, 5.45 ounces. So just under five and a half ounces for a knife that's almost nine inches. Not bad at all. Really nice titanium, VG10 steel. Action is really good because we've got ball bearings in there and it just, you know, it opens quite well. And uh, you can make it open hard or you can make it open soft. On mine, for some reason, I do get a tiny bit of uh, lock stick. I do have to push a little bit harder to undo it sometimes. Like if I really make it, you know, thunder out and just smash out, I do have to give a tiny bit extra effort to unlock the knife. So that being said, I will 
I think I'm going to try to smooth that out just a little bit, see if I can get that action a little bit nicer. Um, before I show you the pictures of the inside, I'll talk about the price. Right now at GearBest, there's a sale going on for the whole outdoor category. You can save 12% by using the coupon code OUT12OFF. This knife right now is regular price, so that coupon code would apply. So you could save 12% off of the price of this knife, which means you could save, uh, you know, right around $10. A little bit more in Canadian, a little bit less in American. The price is, in American, $85.99, and they will charge you $0.03 cents shipping. <laughs> $0.03. Cents. It's funny that they put that number on there. In Canadian dollars, it's $110.27. And they're going to charge you four cents shipping. <laughs> Euros seventy one thirty, and they charge you two cents shipping. And British pounds sixty three point two, and they charge you I think two or three cents shipping. They might have just said free shipping. I don't know why they said it was just a few cents. So that's good because a lot of other knives have three, four, five dollars shipping. So you can say that you're saving that little bit amount. And twelve percent off of those numbers is not an insignificant number. Is this knife a cheap budget knife? No. It's not a high price knife either. It's sort of just above the budget range into sort of just getting into the moderate price range. I think it's worth the amount that you're having to pay for it. That being said, I think I will probably put this into a sale pretty soon. I'm selling them at budget knives first. Uh, on the following weekend, I think I might be selling just a few of my you know, more moderate priced knives. And that won't be this weekend. That will be the very last weekend in February that I'll probably do knives like this. This might be one of them. I'm not totally sure yet. Now let's take this apart and show you the insides. And as I'm getting ready to take this apart and show you the insides, let me tell you what I use. I'm using scotch Bright scouring pads. Yes, scotch Bright scouring pads. I'll show you a picture. The way I'm doing my cutting tests is I take a consistent thickness of the scouring pad and I put the blade down and I slide it through until it cuts all the way through. This didn't quite make it all the way through, so I finish it off and all well, that's through. And the number of cuts that it takes before I can't cut paper anymore that gives it a number. And so I'm doing this a lot the way Peter does it over on the Cedric and Ada show, except for instead of using rope, I'm using scouring pads. Um, and since scouring pads aren't that cheap and they're hard to find, I'm not publishing the number for this because I'm not going to be using this scouring pad. This is from my local Walmart. I found a janitorial supply store. And so those scouring pads are going to be slightly different so my numbers are going to change. So I'm going to have to redo this test. That's why I'm not publishing any numbers yet. But this knife and the Kaiser knife had consistently very close to the same results within two or three cuts. So I'm saying this is authentic VG10. Now let's take a look at the inside of this knife. Okay, so now that you've seen all the insides and all the features and stuff, I really like that lock bar insert a lot. It's made to fit in there very well, and it works quite well. This is a very comfortable knife. That's one of the biggest pros. I did tell you a slight negative about, I wish there was a slight bit more chamfering there. I like that you've got two finger separation. Quite comfortable. Um, you can sneak up and do work like that, and you can keep your hand comfortable that way. It's a big knife. Action is really good. When there's no thumb stud, that means when you're slicing through stuff, nothing can catch on it. That's really good. And the texture of all the design and everything on here is quite cool. I'm very fond of it. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Some people are just going to dislike it quite a lot. Uh, the fit and finish on everything is done really, really well. I'd like that it doesn't overstate it with the name. You know, you get Y start on the... Uh, Ricasso on this side and VG10 on this side, and that's all that you get. That's really nice. It's uh, flipping action is very good. I already showed you that before. 
It's not too much of a pocket poker. The uh, edges are rounded over nicely on here. There's a very slight bit of jimping on the front of the flipper arm. And you can use just a little bit of flipper energy, or you can use an awful lot. Uh, the uh, press down method works. I just did it very lightly there. And of course, the light switch method where you're just pulling straight back, that works as well. I like the satin lines on the, it's a little bit dirty from my uh, oily skin, but you can just see the satin lines coming down on the steel right there. And then the stone wash. This is a very good looking knife, in my opinion. I like the thickness of the stock. It's thick enough it being an inch this way and being a very high grind gives you a narrow enough edge. Very sturdy, solid knife that looks really, really good. Um, I do like purple. In any case, you know, just look at all the milling work on here. I showed it to you before already, and it's just done so very, very well. I really wish they would have done some little bit of milling out of the inside and got this thing down to like 4.9 ounces. That would have been really special. And uh, if I do sell this, I'm going to clean out all the little lines inside on the screws and stuff and sell a really good looking product. It's a nice knife that I like, that I recommend. If you are in, if you are in the market for something this expensive and with these kinds of materials, then, hey, I recommend this. I like it. Feels good. Fun knife. Enjoyable. And it looks good. I don't generally like Tantos, but this Tanto is quite nice. Um, I will say, since the cutting edge, uh, the uh, sharpener's toil didn't come forward quite far enough, I do have a tiny bit where I was uh, sharpening and I got into the plunge ever so slightly right there on uh, both sides. Not so much on this side, but a tiny bit on that side. Not a big problem, but, you know, that kind of thing happens. So there you go. This is the Y Start. LK5012. Titanium VG10. Done well. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and all that other good stuff. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. You guys rock. And remember, friends, I didn't do a cut test. <laughs> a cut demonstration. Well, I did a very small one. It cuts very, very well. Here's that uh, uh, manila rope. Zips through it super easily. Here's that sizal rope. Oh, I just missed. You know, zips through that quite easily. It's a good rope that can do hard work, and it can do delicate work as well. And after all that, it still cuts paper like a charm. Thanks again. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.